So in today's video, we are gonna learn how to use and create rules in Microsoft Outlook. Rules are a great way of automating and cleaning up your Outlook without really doing much aside from setting up the rule for the first time. At present, there are two versions of Outlook that are available, the traditional 365 desktop, desktop application and the new Outlook app too. Uh, so we're gonna learn how to use rules in both of them. Of course, if you like this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you wanna supercharge to raise your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. With that being said, Let's get into this. The great thing about rules in Microsoft Outlook is that it helps you triage your inbox and a lot of these generic emails like you see Office 365 Report, Microsoft Viva, Microsoft On Behalf of Tasks, things like that, generic emails, you can automatically have these filed if into different folders that you can read later, but they don't clog your inbox up. There are two ways to access and create rules. The first one is by selecting on the Home tab in Outlook. Halfway through, you can see it says Move, and you've got move, rules, and send to OneNote. You can simply select on the drop down menu of rules, and you can choose to always move messages from a sender. You can create new rules, and then you can, of course, manage your rules and alerts. The other way of accessing creating rules is simply by right clicking on an email, scrolling down to where it says rules, and you get the same three options. From here, we're gonna select on create a rule, and this dialog box is gonna pop up. The first thing you can do when creating the rule is choosing what the action is or when I get an email from and then choosing the condition. It could be from a specific sender. It could be a subject that contains specific wording or it could be sent to yourself only or a group of people. If this was a email that was sent to multiple people, you could drop this down and you have a few different options. I think the two best ways to choose are either from a specific sender. So you could have all the emails from Office 365 reports or you could choose subject containing. One of the caveats I'd say with when you choose a specific email address or, or a sender is that if you get different emails from that one alias, you could get 365 reports, but then you could have other emails as well that come from this sender. You might accidentally filter all of those into a folder. So if you are worried about that, I would choose subjects containing and then having the detail of that message there. For this example though, we are gonna choose all the emails from Office 365 reports, and then we're gonna choose on the action or the do the following. You can choose to display a new alert window and you can choose to play a sound, but I would actually recommend having both these turned off. And then of course you can choose to move the item into a folder. I'm simply gonna select on this and then you can choose the folder by selecting folder and choosing where you want it to go automatically. I keep a folder called red and that's where I file away all my red emails that I no longer need to action. They're easily accessible, but they don't clog up my inbox. If you wanted to get into the advanced settings here, you can of course select on advanced options. And this is where you can choose multiple, multiple conditions where you could choose whether it's a flagged email, you could choose uh, whether it was marked with an importance, a sensitivity, all this sort of stuff. To me, this is actually really granular and I'm not sure if many people need to get this granular. In your own time, you can choose and have a read through here but I think for the majority of people out there, simply selecting on the basic create a rule and choosing to move it to a folder is the best way to get started with rules. For now, we've actually chosen what we're gonna do is all the emails from 365 reports, we're gonna move it to our red folder and simply select on okay. This is now gonna pop up with the dialog box confirming that the rule has been created and then you can actually choose to run the rule now on your current folder which means that if you have an inbox of a year, two years, five years, whatever it may be, you can choose to run this rule now on the, your inbox and it will automatically run it for all your previous emails as well. So when we select on OK, you'll see that all the emails from 365 have actually been moved into our red folder and they're just over here. So it's really easy and really cool to create rules. Uh, if you wanted to edit or change a rule, you wanna go back into the Home tab, go over to the Move section, drop down on rules and choose manage rules and alerts. And this is gonna take you back to a similar dialog box that's gonna show you all the rules that you currently have. And you can choose here to create a new rule. You can choose to change a rule by selecting on it and choosing something. You could choose to copy a rule, delete it or run your rules right now. But it is that easy to create, run and edit rules in the traditional 365 desktop app. Now we're gonna jump over to the new Microsoft Outlook where I actually think it's even easier to use rules. In the new Outlook application, there are of course those two ways of accessing rules again. First one by selecting home, choosing the drop down of rules. 
and here you can create or manage your rules or you can right click on an email scroll down to the advanced actions and then choose to create a rule let's open up create rule and then it's going to give you a very simple layout right now where it will give you the option of always move messages from microsoft on behalf of your organization so with that title and you can choose to move it to a certain folder i'm just going to dump it into archives for now and i'll select on ok i can choose to run this rule and go ok and then everything with that Microsoft on behalf of has been moved to the archive. So you can actually make it really simple by using the rules, create rule, and then of course you can use the simple drop down here. Or if you wanna get more granular with it, you can simply select on the more options icon here. This will take you to the settings. And the first thing it shows you is all the rules that you currently have active in 365. This is on the new Outlook as well as the old. You can see here we have the email that, or the rule that we just created about 365 reports. You can go in and play, move these rules up and down, edit or delete them. Or of course you can create a new rule as well. If you select on create a new rule, and then I'm gonna choose for all messages from Microsoft Viva, it already populates the title here, but you can of course customize the rule name. And then you can say it from all emails from Microsoft Viva. You can choose to add another condition if you wanted to. And then of course you choose the action and you could move it, you could copy it, you could mark it as red, you could forward it. I'm simply gonna select on this action to be mark as red. You could add another action or add another exception, but it's really easy here that you follow the flow. And then I'd recommend you have the button of stop processing more rules turned on. We can go into learn more and this will tell us why. In this example here, um, it will run the rule and then stop pressing more rules is selected. So no action, no additional processing will occur. Basically, it just means it's gonna stop running the rule. There may be a time where you need to have this turned off, but for most people, having stop pressing rules turned on is the default that I'd recommend. And then I'd simply select on run rule now and hit save. And then I'm gonna press on play and you can see that all the emails from Microsoft Viva have been marked as red. Of course, if you wanted to go in and edit and customize and change your rules around, you can simply select on rules, drop down your manage rules, and this will take you to that same dialog box in your settings where you can force a rule to play. You can move it up and down in terms of the cadence in which they play. You can edit the rule or you can delete them all together. And there you have it. It is that easy to create and use rules in Microsoft Outlook. We learned to do it today in both the traditional Outlook desktop application and the new Outlook app as well. Let me know how you're gonna use rules in the comment section down below. If you like this video, let me know by giving a thumbs up. And if you're in a super chose raise your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.